Hello everyone. Today I would like to talk about this book, uh, but I don't want to make a review of this book. There's plenty of that. Um, but rather I'd like to do something stupid, which is to um, offer a prediction about what other uh, sales rep types uh, the author is going to write about next. Uh, so there are two authors to this book, which is Matthew Dixon and Brent Adamson. So if I go to uh, Mr. Adamson's website, uh, brentadamson.net, I don't see, and today is uh, 26th of September, 2024. So I don't see any announcements of a new book at the moment that he had uh, released, not that I know of, but I have heard him uh, on a podcast with April Dunford, uh, speaking about the release of, of a new book in, in which he's um, allegedly is going to announce a new type of a sales rep. And so having looked at the types that he had already provided with his co-author, um, I've decided to make a prediction because um, I, I will uh, show you the model that I have come up with and I'm using in my consulting practice um, is going to appear on your screens as well but here's how it's how it looks so it's a three-dimensional model um, and I would like to you know make some comments so first of all a disclaimer I don't suppose that this is this uh, book is not worth reading quite the contrary I think it is worth reading this book It's based on research and the stuff that's written there is great. It's, um, it's good to have that knowledge. So I, I recommend reading it. Uh, for me personally, I didn't like the, the style of the book because it's, you know, written a little bit salesy, but it, or in a salesy way. But it makes sense, right? Because folks are definitely salespeople. And um, while well, they, they, they could convey their ideas in a manner that they they were trained to do like like uh, salespeople, right? So apart from that, I still think it's a, it's a good book, so worth reading. Now, um, if you go if you go and pick up this book and you go to um, page eighteen, uh, the the authors suggest well authors suggest uh, that they've identified five types uh, of sales reps and. They call them the hard worker, uh, the relationship builder, the lone wolf, reactive problem solver, and the challenger, finally, which is the title of the book. So my model predicts that there are eight primary types, and I'm going to talk about them. So the prediction that I'm making, the, the next uh, sales rep type that uh, Mr. Adamson is going to uh, talk about in his upcoming book is going to be one of those unidentified uh, three types yet. So he had discovered or um, identified five types that I've just mentioned, and I predict that there are eight primary types. And so, well, we'll see how it plays out. It's just, I'm shooting this video for the record. Um, now, the hard worker, as you will see on, the, on, on my model, it's placed on, uh, in, in octant four, uh, and this is similar to what Reed Holden, if you read this book, this is a great book too, Negotiating with uh, Backbone. Um, he refers, well, I'd say, I'd put it this way. The hard worker that is described in the Challenger's sale uh, is practically the same as the scout in um, Holden's um, typology. So... Um, this is a, if, you, if you're using a DISC language, D-I-S-C, this is a CD type, right? Conscient, high in conscientiousness and high in dominance. Next one, the relationship builder. Uh, you will identify this uh, profile or type of a sales rep um, in Octant 2 on my map. Uh, I call this a caretaker. So I, I didn't find this type in um, Holden's works, so I've assigned the name to it myself. And to me, because this is a SC type, uh, so steady and conscientious, uh, this is this this is this more looks like a caretaker to me. 
right? Because this uh, profile is interested in relationship building. Hence, uh, the um, the authors of uh, the challenger sale call it the relationship builder. So the next one, the lone wolf. Uh, the, this type you will find in Octant Five. Um, uh, the Holden in, in Holden's works. Um, Mr. Holden calls it, in my opinion, the player. Uh, the next one, the reactive problem solver. In my opinion, this is the uh, the one that you will find in octant number one on my map. Uh, and now the challenger, the challenger is in my, on, on my map. You will identify it in position number eight or octant number eight. So therefore, there are three types, in my opinion, that are missing. And uh, Brent Adamson is going to write about one of those three. So one of them is uh, in octant number seven. Um, if we're using the Holden's uh, works from negotiating with backbone, this is called the patient outsider. Next, in octant six, um, Again, using Holden's terminology, this is going to be uh, called in the pack. And the, the another missing is um, in Octant 3, which I called Honeybee. Now, Honeybee is going to be very similar to uh, the Scout, but um, unlike Scout, the Honeybee is going to be interested in relationship building as well. So it's, it, it's going to be something like a... Um, something in between the scout and the relationship, uh, sorry, yeah, something in between the hard worker and the relationship builder. So this will be um, something in between. All right, um, now why do I think that um, these are the types, or rather, I wanted to draw your attention to this graph right here. So the, the authors suggested in their book that According to their research, the best types were uh, the lone wolf and the challenger. And so the, the other three types did not perform that well. And so if you look at my map and you will see that both the challenger and lone wolf, so positions five and uh, eight, these two types, they primarily, um, or I should say this, these, these two types will succeed most when they target value buyers. So if you look at the works of uh, Reed Holden and um, um, Thomas Nagle, there are basically four types of, of buyers. So uh, the price buyer, the convenience buyer, the relationship buyer, and the value buyer. And so uh, the octants five and eight uh, is where you find those value buyers. And so the reason why the challenger and the lone wolf are so successful, in my opinion, is that because they they were targeting the value buyers. That's why um, in this, in, in the data, this stuff appears, right? So if, if the researchers were to, and okay, I'm speculating here, I admit that, but this is all according to my, um, to the studies that I've conducted and uh, to my model, which predicts this. So if if the authors were to focus on, let's say, not a um, corporate world, but more on, um, on the price buyers, so maybe uh, companies who are mid-size, mid-size and smaller uh, companies who would behave as uh, price buyers, they would probably identify that uh, which one is that the hard worker and the reactive problem solver would perform better than uh, the lone wolf and the challenger. Definitely better than uh, the two types that I've proposed, which is uh, hold, in Holden's uh, terminology, patient outsider and in the pack. So another thing I wanted to mention is that in Holden's Reed Holden's uh, works, there's the type that he calls the, um, uh, the type of buyer that he calls a poker player. And so the poker player, in order to counter that, you need a, you need a behavior from a sales rep that can be described as the gambler. And on my, in, 
So if you look at my model, you won't find it unless you look at the core. So you can imagine that there is a, this another octant or cube at the core, at the center of this three-dimensional cube. And so that would be where you find a typical um, gambler, which would be successful um, while negotiating with a buyer who acts as a poker player. So there you go, my prediction about three plus one um, additional sales reps that Mr. Adams is going to release a book about. Release a book about. If you want to try out my model, well, there you go. You can you can you can use that. And of course, you can wait for Mr. Adams to release his book, and probably in another three years, he's going to release another book about another um, sales rep type, and then in another three years, about another type and so on. So the benefit of using his work, of course, is that he, he's probably going to have data to support his, to support his claims. Um, I do not have the data to support it. This is the theoretical model, which is based on the studies that were available to me. And so you can take a leap of faith and apply this in your business or you can wait for another six to nine years and then have all the knowledge you need um, to, well, alter your current sales efforts. Because what my model suggests is that you need different type types of uh, sales rep to target different types of buyers. And like I said, there are four primary types of buyers, the price buyer, the, con the convenience buyer, the uh, relationship buyer and the value buyer. And for those, dependent on the external conditions, you need different types of sales reps in, to increase the chances of success. Well, that's it, folks. See you in the next video. Bye.